Hi everybody, it's Ricky here. Today I've got a very different video for you. It is sad, but I promise you there is a happy ending. It is a very different type of video. I'm sure you're all used to me doing all these stupid jokes. Um, by the way, thank you all for watching our videos and subscribing. And um, we really appreciate your support in helping us get to over a thousand subscribers. Like you've seen in the thumbnail, it's not a pretty subject. Um, but it's something that I've wanted to share for a very long time. Um, and now we have the platform for it. So, where to start? In the year of 2017, my wife fell pregnant with twins, a boy and a girl. It was one of the most exciting times in our lives. As you can see, I'm going to show some pictures over here of our daughter, who's nearly nine years old. Um, Abigail, this channel's named after her. And um, this was just her being excited about the twins, a photo shoot for her new brother and sister. Six and a half months into the pregnancy, my wife was in a horrific car accident. A speeding truck came from behind her and just hit her from behind. Um, it was going 130 kilometers an hour. Um, I'm not quite sure exactly what the conversion is in miles per hour, but I'll put it here up top. Um, the truck came from behind, took out the whole back of her car. She had uh, Abigail's car seat back then. Lucky Abby wasn't in the car. It was completely squashed. Um, her car then went into another car, which went into another car, which went into another car. Um, there was a whole pile up and you can imagine her being pregnant with twins and she walked out absolutely fine. Um, it was an absolute miracle. And um, you can imagine the stress that was going through. We had to run a lot of tests. We had to go through scans, um, but thank goodness everything was fine. Um, from there, very, very much tiptoeing throughout the pregnancy and um, okay let's try to do this again on the 5th of January 2018 um, she went into labor and we rushed her to the hospital where her gynecologist was practicing and operating unfortunately they did not have two spare beds in ICU apparently it's standard practice um, to put twins straight into ICU um, as they're born so off she goes in an ambulance. I followed her to a car to another very good private hospital. So we thought, and um, that was it. Um, she had her Caesar, and uh, we had a beautiful baby boy, and okay. Sorry guys, this is like a fourth take, uh, it's just very difficult to have to keep cutting scenes. On the 5th of January 2018, um, our beautiful boy was born, Tyson J, aka TJ, and his little beautiful sister, Emma. After the 120th time, let's try and get through this. Um, so as I've said, our, our twins were born perfectly healthy. Um, they were born at a very good weight. They were just under two kilograms, which is very good for twins. Straight into ICU, doctors were happy. Uh, my wife went into the ward to heal and all great. Um, three days later, my wife was discharged from the hospital. The twins were kept there. They wanted to keep them for seven days. Okay, we were happy with that. Um, my wife was filling up bags with breast milk and um, I was taking them to the hospital. Um, the day after she got back, um, I had gone back to work and my wife phoned me and said, I don't feel okay, something's not right, I feel very dizzy. Um, immediately I said, phone your gynecologist. She phoned her gynecologist. He said, the only thing you can think of is maybe an infection in the wound. Um, so he put on an antibiotic. Um, the next day, she was even worse. It was just vomiting all over. Um, it was just very, very bad. And we got a phone call to say that Emma wasn't doing very well. She was just having some breathing problems. They said a distended stomach. Um, excuse my pronunciation, uh, but nothing to worry about. Um, throughout the day, my wife Laurie got more and more sick. And um, at about eight o'clock at night, she lost her eyesight and she lost her hearing. It came very quickly. Um, this all started happening. Um, she was severely dehydrated and um, we called the ambulance, um, they had to take her down on a chair um, or she went to the hospital. 
at this point we had no idea to put a connection through to the twins. Um, they then put on a stronger antibiotic. They didn't know what was going on. Um, this was in the emergency room. They then decided they're going to do further tests. She got worse. Um, the doctors then discovered it was viral meningitis. After hearing this is viral meningitis, we were distraught. She didn't really know what was going on. I knew what the implications could be, especially with our twins, and I started panicking. The doctors reassured me it's not meningitis, um, and Emma started getting worse throughout the night. Um, they phoned me in the middle of the night slash the morning to say, Emma's got a high temperature, her breathing is not good, you better come. Now, um, my wife was in hospital, um, I phoned my mom, and we rushed there. Emma wasn't doing very good. They then started they then started putting two and two together and they said stop the breast milk from the bags. If this is a chance it's meningitis, this is not good at all. Um, it was very difficult. They needed to test properly and the way to do that is a needle through the spine or into the spine and Emma was not in a good state to do this. She was too small, too little and um, Sorry. Emma started showing signs of getting better. Um, I went home, Laurie was in the hospital, and the next morning I phoned and said, you better come again. And um, I had Abby with me, and at this stage Abby was only, what, three and a half, four years old. Very small, but she's, as you've seen in her videos, very intelligent, she's always been, and she under understood what, more or less, what was going on. Um, I took Abby to my mom's house and my aunt um, met me at the hospital. Off we went into ICU and um, Emma had just had a fit. Breathing wasn't good. Um, you can hear alarm, alarm bells going off everywhere. They told us to go sit in a room, um, which we decided to say a prayer. I'm not a very religious person, um, but there is something to it and there is a need for it sometimes, regardless. And I, I do believe in that. Um, the nurse came to us and said, I'm very sorry, um, the chances aren't good. Um, she's going to, if she survives, she's going to be severely brain damaged and um, probably never walk, talk again. Um, so let's just say our prayers. And then I knew it was time to let go. Um, I'll never get that vision of her shaking, little body shaking. Um, while she was having a fit, all the doctors ran in, um, asked me to please give them some space. I went back to this room that I have stuck in my head. I even remember what's painted on the wall. It's just, it's crazy. A few minutes later, the nurse walked into this room, she just looked at me, and I kind of knew, and I just said to her, is she gone? She nodded her head. And it's at that point where I felt a sense of relief, but a sense of sadness and also a sense of fear of what's to come. Um, also, how am I going to tell my wife? She's not in a good state. Her immune system is completely gone. Um, absolutely terrible. Um, I then had to break the news to my wife. She was not good at all, screaming. Um, she was in very good care. Um, but not a good situation at all. We had a long chat to all the doctors. Um, the doctors um, that were treating her met with the doctors that were treating our twins um, to try and figure out how they can save Tyson's life because we knew this was just going to happen. And they said they're going to treat him for meningitis, although it's viral, it's very difficult to treat, but um, it's not as bad as bacterial. Um, but it can be deadly, as we had just found out. And um, the doctor, I'll never forget where I was standing, the place, the sounds, everything the doctor said to me. It was actually my wife's doctor, a specialist. Your son's going to be okay. And I don't think, I know she was trying to help. Her intentions were good, but 
he wasn't okay because two days later the same thing happened to him. He had a fit, he was severely brain damaged and um, at this stage Laurie um, was a bit worse and when I had to go and tell her um, after that was all she was holding on to, um, I'd spoken to the doctors and they said we need to sedate her, you've got two minutes to tell her and they gave her the injection. I told her, I think the whole hospital, the whole world heard her screaming and um, she went to sleep. They kept her in ICU, intensive care, for the next few days uh, for safety reasons but also for her health. And thank goodness for our family and friends and our daughter Abby, um, who's the apple of my heart. Um, we pulled through and Laurie pulled through and she got her hearing back. Um, she got her eyesight back. She, she has been left hard of hearing. Um, but she is absolutely fine. She wears hearing aids. Um, we have battled through a lot of depression, anxiety. Um, but um, we got through it. Um, what happens next is a um, bit of sweet, but mostly sweet. And that is um, Lori then fell pregnant two days before we found out our country was going into lockdown for COVID. Now for us, we started freaking out. It's just another virus. It's gonna, something's gonna happen. She's pregnant. A pregnant woman has the lowest immune system and no one knew anything really about it. We just saw everywhere, people dying everywhere on the news, all the terrible stuff. Um, and the doctor said, listen, just stay at home. Don't go anywhere other than your scans, which we were still very scared to. I wasn't allowed to go for the scans. Um, it was very, very scary. Um, every single grocery was delivered to our door. Um, it was so extreme, I would um, wait 10 minutes before I would go and actually take the parcels. Um, even though you can't catch COVID like that, it was outside. They would leave them far away from the door. And I'd then spray everything to the point where the ink would come off some of the packaging. Um, and thank goodness we didn't get COVID. Um, but that, that, drove, that drove us a little bit crazy. And as you'll see on our videos, we have a little boy. And on the 5th of November, we had a little boy, Caden. And you'll see him on our videos. He's three and a half years old. He is amazing. And um, we truly believe that the twins sent us Caden. So what I wanted to do was to get the message out to people that, number one, if I can do this, and I don't consider myself a strong person, so can you. As difficult as it is, and I understand it's easier said than done, we all go through hardships, we've all been through a whole lot of different things. Some of us handle it a lot easier than others. I'm not one of them. Um, I've been told I'm strong, I don't feel it. Um, but I've been encouraged by my psychologist to tell my story for a very long time, and now we have that platform, we have you guys. And I want to spread this message not only about meningitis, um, being aware of what's out there and um, just taking care of yourself when you're pregnant. You never know what's out there um, and appreciate each other. There is always hope and if I can go through this, if my family can go through this, I just want to know that I could help you guys in some way. I always try to encourage people, my friends, my family, strangers, um, to try and learn from what's happened to us, to appreciate life. When I see some Karens at the shop shouting at the poor shop worker on minimum wage, I feel so bad and I think to myself, you know, appreciate life. Don't wait for God to teach you that lesson in order to appreciate it. Learn it from people like us. Um, and she may not know people like us and this is why I'd like to spread this message because there's so many angry people in this world. And I would like to say a lot of the angry people haven't had all these things done. Had the kindest people that I know are people that have had these hardships happen to them. and. God forbid something like this should happen to you or your family. Um, so let's try bring a smile on everybody's face. Um, if you've had a bad day, I hope this helps turn things around. Um, I hope this helps you think twice before you shout at someone. You never know what they've been through. And um, thank you guys. And uh, please give us a like, comment below. We will be answering all our comments. We hope that we can help you and encourage you. We do want to share this message as much as we can. Um, so we appreciate you all very, very much. Until next time, enjoy the rest of our stupid joke videos.